My name is Noor Fidel, and I'm 18 years old. Originally, my parents are um, from Iraq, so they immigrated here like a while back. My name is uh, Noor Enae. I am half French, half Syrian. I was born in France. I lived um, 11 years in France, 11 years in Syria, and I've been in Canada for about 15 years now. Being a Muslim woman living in Canada, I think I feel pretty lucky. Of course, sometimes, sometimes there are some people where, you know, they, they start saying things or act in a way that would make me a bit uncomfortable. Um, and I know that few of the other Muslim women had uh, pretty, pretty bad experiences. In the younger ages before, like, I would wear hijab. There wasn't really anything too big or noticeable that I experienced, you know, any sort of racism or anything like that. It was all kind of subtle. When I first decided to wear the hijab, I felt like there was a different kind of um, perspective from people. Like beforehand, if anyone looked at me, it would just be people looking at me. Um, but when I decided to wear it, it was kind of like... I I questioned why they were looking. Was it because of, you know, what I was wearing or my appearance? Were they afraid of me? And personally, like before my experience, I have had, you know, multiple um, kind of verbal assaults. You know, people would, like during transit, um, would say certain things to me or like when I got off, someone would say something to me. Like I've always had that kind of look of disgust from people. I remember when there was the um, terrorist attack in Belgium, I was down, I was walking downtown and two people, two different people walked by me and said the word terrorists. And I, it, it was painful because at the same time, you know that they are angry at what happened, but it makes you angry that you just want to stop them and tell them, well, I'm not like, I'm not like them. I, it's not my fault. It's I'm not part of that, and and it's they also say it in a kind of a coward way where they say it and run away. So you don't they don't even give you the chance to to actually have a, a conversation with those people. When I take public transit, I had few experiences where I felt uncomfortable. For example, people saying words, or whether it's directly or indirectly to me. Sometimes I would ignore, sometimes I would ask why would they say that. Um, one time I had a man who literally hit my face and turned back and started again saying things but I was in shock that I couldn't understand what he was saying so I, I can't really be sure that it was a kind of Islamophobia or he was just rude in general but it's that kind of things that sometimes you wonder um, if you're safe or not. I remember showing up to work and just telling myself like today is going to be a good day like I'm going to be as positive as I can and so taking the transit I it was okay like it was fine getting to waterfront but it was the moment that I got to waterfront station is when I sat down a few seats away from some man and that's when he got up while I had earphones in my ear and was talking to a friend and he got up and he had this really aggressive look on his face and so when he stood in front of me and I took my earphone out um, you can just hear him like yelling all these like slurs to me in Arabic he was like Arabic and like a different language so it really took me back because you know he was telling me that he was going to kill me and kill all Muslims and that I should go back to my country and he was calling me like you know profanity words my body and my mind were not really processing any of it and so I just remember kind of looking at the passengers on the train and you know seeing and there was people who were looking but you know, you don't really expect him to know what's going on since he was speaking in a different language that I don't think most of them would understand. But it wasn't when it wasn't until he actually tried to grab my head and force it onto his crotch. That's when I immediately backed up and like put my hands above my face, and I was um, I was looking again at the passengers because this, because at this moment you would know that even if they didn't understand what he was saying, you knew that he tried to get physical. And it was just I just remember being in that moment of him just constantly yelling, and you know he already tried to get physical at me once and it wasn't until he hit me in the face that one um one bystander all the way at the end of the train just like run up and push the guy off and like away from me and then he immediately backed up and just stood in front of me until the man got off the train the next stop and that's when i called the police when the that man hit uh, my face um i was i was really in shock i i was really in shock and i was kind of um a bit disappointed in myself for not 
saying anything or turning back and just stopping him, asking him why did he do that. You just feel that someone literally um, broke that that personal barrier of of yours. You know, your personal space has been literally broken. Uh, whether we're Muslims, people of colors, the LGBT community, all those minorities uh, live the same thing. People who hate them are actually ignorant about them. I believe that the reason why people have certain beliefs and certain perspectives on certain people is because Western media, the way they perspect, you know, the, the way that they show and project Muslim people, for example, it's you always see it as a negative term and like a negative thing and very violent and very aggressive. However, like in reality, that's really nothing what it is. And so I think that what media does is it really paints all of us in the same brush. And so when one person specifically commits one crime or commits some sort of, you know, violent attack, it's like we are all to blame for it. And like we have this right away, like feeling that we have to be the ones to apologize for these actions, although it had nothing to do with us. The thing that everyone says that racism in Canada doesn't exist. Well, unfortunately, it does. And it's, it's kind of time for us to now, instead of just talking about it, to take real action and be accountable for it and for the reality of it.